Allie Buckman with the Potomac Bead Company and I'm going to be making a necklace today using some high-end faceted briolettes as well as some wire and chain. I recently did a video using some of the small faceted rondelles in the high-end gemstones and I thought I'd make a necklace to match some of those different designs. The nice thing with a lot of these strands of high-end that we have, it's a mixture that you get on the strand. They're also affordably priced because they're not A-grade um, gemstones as far as going to be used in a setting for a ring or anything, but they are easily accessible for the price that they're at and they're still really clear and nice and cut very well. Again, the nice thing with a lot of these gemstones is you do get a variety. So these were also on the strand as well to give some color mix to it. I'm going to be making a long necklace that is going to have a cluster of some of the briolettes that match some of the earrings at the end. I like the long look for summer. You get hot when you have something up next to your neck. And this is going to be a longer necklace all in one. And you don't even need a clasp for it. If you do need any of the materials to follow along with this necklace here, you can purchase from us at PotomacBeads.com or you can go to your local Potomac Bead Company store. On the left hand side here we'll do a little drop down and that way you can follow along with the different materials if you need to get them at all. Um, you can have little links to those different materials. You can do this with a variety of products, a variety of briolettes and different chains so it can be really kind of taken on to your own. It can also be short if you don't like the long length of the necklace. To start the necklace we are going to be using chain. The chain that I've chosen is a little cable chain here and this is an Italian silver coated cable chain and it is um, going to be three feet of that cable chain. When I'm using that chain, I'm also going to be highlighting it and kind of adding some 24 gauge wire. So this is 24 gauge silver plated wire as well. If you want to, you could also use sterling silver wire and um, that's going to hold up really well. So either one will work for you. You could also use 26 gauge for this if some of your gemstones do have really small holes and you won't be able to get them through them. Also here, I'm working on a bead mat. That's going to help stop these beads from rolling, as well as help when I'm kind of cutting the wire to hook on to it. In addition to the chain, the little briolettes here are the faceted uh, mixed quartz briolettes. I did remove the amethyst and the carnelian, and I just have the green amethyst here, as well as the appetite that I'll be working with. As far as the small little rondelles, um, when you're looking at them, those small little rondelles are about 3.5 millimeter. Again, I use them in the earrings that I did a video on, and I'm going to use them here just to highlight some of these briolettes. If you are interested in the briolette strand, just to let you know, the item number is 140021. And these are about a 6 to 10 millimeter briolette. To work with the wire and the chain, I do have a ruler sitting handy and by so that way a yardstick so I can measure out the chain and make my exact measurements. In addition to the yardstick, I do have three sets of pliers sitting here. I have a wire cutters, I have a bent needle nose pliers or a straight will work, and I have a round nose pliers to make nice round loops. I do have those three pliers sitting handy. Also, if you're not used to working with wire, you may want to have a pair of the nylon jaw pliers with you as well. So those are the kind of four tools that you need in order to do this necklace. Again, those little rondelles there, those are the mixed gemstone strand that um, you can use if you do want to purchase that one. It's item number 140014, um, and that gives you a nice variety of different gemstones as well. So the fun thing with a lot of these products when uh, gemstones are used is you don't necessarily make them big and bold, and because there is mixes, you do get to use a lot at once. I am going to be using all of the gemstones that are sitting here. Um, in the little ones, I did pull up just a tiny bit of peridot ones, but then I have mainly uh, the quartz as well as the Labrador. That uh, grayish color are the Labrador that I'm working with. I'm going to get ready to start by kind of getting my bead mat cleaned off and getting ready with my 24 gauge wire and my little briolettes. To get started, the first thing I've done off camera because my um, yardstick is pretty large and hard to fit underneath the screen, was I cut my three feet of chain into three pieces. My first piece here 
is about 20 inches and then I have two pieces that are six inches each. So I'm sorry, my 32 inches there. So I have my 32 inches of chain with the two pieces at six and the one piece at 20. If you do want to make a longer necklace and you want it longer than 32, it is going to hang down a little bit because those briolettes will be at the end, but you can also use, um, you can also use a longer piece of chain here in the back. The first thing we're actually going to do is get ready to add wire to all of our briolettes. But just to get the hang of it before we start that, we're going to attach the long piece of chain to the two shorter pieces of chain. To do this, I'm going to pick up two of my darkest little pieces of the rondelles there. So two of the little darker gray ones. And what I'm going to do is connect those to the chain. I have my 24 gauge wire sitting here. And the easiest thing to do is to just cut about a 12 inch piece of wire with your wire cutters. Put the wire aside so it doesn't get mixed up in your project. And I'm going to pick up my round nose pliers. If you haven't worked with round nose pliers before and you haven't mastered the eye pin, you may want to stop this video, check out another video working on the eye pin, and then pick up from there. To start, I have my wire and the long piece is below me. That short piece, I have about a half of an inch above the round nose pliers. I'm holding the round nose pliers so they're parallel with, uh, or perpendicular to my body, and the wire's coming straight out the top. I'm gonna hold the wire below and bend the pliers back that. Once that wire gets bent back 90 degrees, I'm gonna come over the top to make a loop. The wire then will touch on the other side of the pliers here. I'm going to switch from the bottom jaw to the top jaw of my pliers and then take that little short piece of wire back. I start with that 90 degree angle and I end with that 90 degree angle. If you're someone that's very particular with size, you can also mark your pliers. Mine have all kinds of markings on them, but you can mark your pliers exactly where your loop is so you make sure all of your loops are identical in size. If the loop does get thrown off a little bit and it's further back, you can always put it back into your pliers and kind of round out the wire and turn that end to make that flat as well. Ideally, you want your eye pin coming straight off of the long piece of wire. I'm then going to pick up my long piece of chain, which is going to be the back, and I'm going to put that loop into the very last link of chain by adding the chain to the long or the short piece of wire, clicking it in there, and then picking up my pliers. Because it's a tight space, I'm just going to use my round nose pliers, hold there, and twist my wire around. So I'm coiling that extra little piece of wire around the base of the eye pin. I have it done four times here, and then I'm going to pick up my wire cutters and cut off that extra little piece of wire. It does have a little tiny bit of an end to it. If it's a long end, you usually can kind of turn it and get a better cut on it. If you want to, you can also go in with your pliers and you can pinch down that end. I usually do that at the very end of all my wire projects just to make sure that that wire is really tight and down. While I have multiple stones kind of thinking past here, I'm actually going to build a couple stones here. So I'll use three stones here at the start. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up three of those stones that I have in the pile. So three of those smoky quartz in that Labrador. And I'm going to put those onto my long piece of my wire. I let that fall down next to my piece of chain. And again, that's the long piece of chain. On the other side of that wire and opposite the beads, I'm going to hold the wire just like I was previously when I made my eye pin. When I make my eye pin this time, I want to make sure that my eye pins line up. So when my eye pins are flat, they're facing up the same direction and you can see both open loops. To do that, while I'm making my loop, I have my eye pin turned to the side. Holding my beads, turn the wire back 90 degrees. Bring the wire over top of the round nose pliers. When it hits on that side, Switch from the top jaw to the bottom jaw of the round nose pliers and complete your loop by pulling the wire back 
to that 90 degree position. You can see the nice link here to both of the eye pins, the coiled eye pins are facing in the same direction. I'm gonna pick up that smaller piece of chain, one of them, and slide that onto the long piece of wire at the end of that eye pin. You can cut the wire down if it makes it more comfortable for you to hold, so that way you're not holding a large piece at once. I usually just cut about 12 inches, work with that, then I'll cut another 12 inches. That chain is now securely in that loop, and what I'm gonna do is mimic those four coils on the other side of the eye pin, so that way it looks the exact same. Once I have those four coils done, and I have that nice connected eye pin link there, I'm gonna trim down my extra wire. Your wire cutters, you always want those pliers face down so that little V section is facing up. Once I do that on one side, I can go in and pinch down that little end there, putting pressure on it. You can also go over to the other side and make sure that's pinched down. I'm gonna flip over to the other piece of chain and the other side of the long 20 inch piece, pick up the other six inch piece and do the exact same thing. As I get down the side of the chain here, I have that long piece in the back and then those two coiled links as well as the six feet or the six inches of wire at the end of those. I'm gonna put that to the side. I'm gonna begin by actually stringing and threading onto this 24 gauge my briolettes and creating um, almost head pin like briolette drops to then add to the chain. To do this, I have my wire left from my um, extra coils there. And what I'm gonna do with this wire is go through my briolettes and wire wrap right above them. Unlike beads with head pins or holes that go straight through, the briolettes need to have wire go through the top in order to let them hang. The wire that I have in my hand, that 24 gauge, is gonna go through the top of the briolette, coming out the left-hand side about a half an inch. The wire that's on the right-hand side, that longer piece, I'm gonna to bend towards the top of the briolette, and it's gonna extend on a plane right from the side of the briolette. The wire that's on the left is going to get crossed over the top of the briolette as well, also in that triangular shape creating right there. The longer piece of wire, I'm going to take my bent nose pliers, hold right at the top of that X. You don't want the top of the X too close right to the bead or it could break the bead. And I'm going to bend that wire up about 45 degrees so that way it's coming straight out the top of my briolette. I'm going to hold right below that X where the wire is crossing over itself and take that shorter piece of wire and coil three times around the top of the briolette. Once I have that, I'm gonna take my wire and trim that briolette, leaving about an inch and a half above, right about two inches above the briolette. I'm gonna cut and that creates my first little wrapped briolette. I'm gonna continue doing the same thing with the rest of the briolettes, taking the wire that I have left in my hand, twisting it through there. If you can't get it through, you can switch down to 26 gauge like I said. Also, I can kind of wiggle it down through there. I do have more, so if I break one, it's not a huge deal. Um, but you can spin the bead onto the wire or spin, or spin the wire as you're putting it through the bead. That's better than just kind of shoving it on there. Once I have the bead in place, which this is moving slow, it's just going right down, I'm gonna continue that same technique. I got my little appetite bead in place there. That long piece of wire is gonna bend over the top. You can straighten that wire piece out as you go. The wire to the left is gonna bend over the top as well, creating that little drop. I hold the wire right above the briolette straighten out that long piece of wire and then coil the shorter piece around three times. When you're coiling you will always want to coil towards the top of the wire. So you're coiling and you're progressing 
from the bottom to the top. If you do have a short piece, you can see I'm kind of pinching it right along the end there to go around the wire. If you need to and you're having issues um, keeping those coils close together, you can kind of cheat a little bit. You want to put the pressure actually at the top. You can hold with your pliers and pull that wire down there. Now that I have this one, I'll move on and I'm going to coil the rest of these um, briolettes into little head pins. Now that I have all of my briolettes ready with that wire on the top, I did throw in one purple just to kind of add that color mix to it. I'm going to take the chain that I've been working on, those two bottom inches or those two bottom pieces there that are six inches and I'm going to start adding my briolettes into the chain. I do want the look of the chain as well almost to look somewhat tasselish so I'm not going to connect right to the bottom of the chain with one of the briolettes. One I will connect to the bottom of the chain. So the idea here is that I'm going to be connecting um, up and down the chain both sides of the chain with the different briolettes here and then what we're going to do is actually gather the chain at the top here with our wire. To add all of the briolettes, I am going to start with the bottommost briolette, which is going to be one of my little green amethysts, and I'm going to add a bead on top. Adding one of those quartz beads, I'm going to let that drop down next to the bead. You can add two beads, you can add three beads, it's kind of up to you. At the bottom here, I'm going to do like we did with the coiled links. Hold the briolette, turn the wire to the side, bring that wire over the top of the round nose pliers. When it hits the little crystal there, or the little uh, Labrador there, I'm going to turn the pliers so that my loop is on the bottom jaw, and then take it out of my pliers. I have space above my briolette here that I can go in and I can actually coil right above the briolette. Before I do that I want to pick up the chain and I actually want to coil it into the chain just like we did previously. So I'm going to pick up one piece of the chain, doesn't matter really which piece of chain you pick, one or the other. I'm going to go into that most bottom loop, put it through the long piece of wire, click it into the loop. If you need to, sometimes you need to pull out that piece of wire a little bit so you can get the chain in there. And I'm just going to coil, holding the loop, not where it's crossing over there. I'm going to coil down towards my rondel bead. Once I have those three coils in, I'm going to cut off that extra chain or that extra piece of wire. So because I'm using uh, plated wire, I'm not really worrying about it too much as far as having uh, some scraps here and some ends. If you are using sterling, you may want to cut the wire right above the briolettes a little bit shorter. Up to you. I'm not really worried about the waist because of what I'm using. Also, I did leave it a little bit longer so that if you do want to use more than one of the faceted rondelles, you can do that as well. So I'm going to put my next briolette on the same chain. I put two rondelles one over top of the other and I'm going to bend and make that loop. Once I have that loop made, I'm going to pick where I want it to go into my chain. Ideally, they're all going to sit in the same direction of chain. That being said, each link of chain is going to be linked like this. One loop is going to be facing towards you and one is going to be facing away. The loop that is facing away is the one that the briolette is on. I'm going to count up and try to make sure that I get another area where the loop is facing that same direction by holding it kind of tight there. You can grab on and see. And I'm up about a quarter of an inch and I add the next briolette in place. Hold that chain there to the side, hold that loop, and coil. Once I have it coiled enough, I'm going to cut off that wire. So I'm going to do the same thing, adding this almost in a cascading fashion here. You can see it where it almost hits the last one. I'll go in now and I'll add a purple sitting about the top here, and then I'll add one of my green. 
I'm gonna go over to the other side and do the same exact thing where I use a green here at the bottom. And I like to break it up so if I am using a bunch of co different colors or one color, I have that kind of going on on either side. So I usually will focus it and put it kind of the design here. I know it's down a little bit, but see exactly where I want the briolettes to hang. They will hang a little bit closer together, so more in a cluster. So you may want to kind of move them around. Get an idea of what you want that cluster to look like, and then you'll know exactly where to put your briolettes. It's also going to determine what size chain you have, where you want to put them, as well as what size briolettes you're working with. So I'm going to continue connecting them to the chain, adding one to three rondelles, and connecting them both on this right side and on the left side. Once all of those briolettes are hanging, we're going to get ready to actually attach the piece. The fun thing with the briolettes hanging is you really can hang them anywhere. If you're very particular and you don't want them to be the exact same place, or if you want to make it more unified and just have one piece of chain hanging, you could cut and attach the links up there, or actually have the two pieces of chain in different lengths. I like the lariat look with the two chains hanging down. So what I'm going to do is actually connect these two pieces of wire. I did end up pulling some other colors of my little faceted rondelles because I did want to match the earrings. To connect the two strands together, I'm going to actually wrap the two chains together. Using that 24 gauge wire, I'm going to take a little piece of it, cut that off my spool here. I'm going to take about a four inch piece here. I'm going to hold my chain knowing that my links match because when you see these links here, I don't want them to look awkward. I'm going to leave a little bit of space above those little lariat pieces. I'm going to hold the wire and hold that chain pretty tight and I'm going to wrap around the two pieces of chain. You can see I'm holding the chain one on one side, one on the other. If you have a vise and you want to put the chain in it, that's up to you. And I'm coiling in a downward fashion, just like we did with all of our coiled eye pins. And I'm coiling around the chain. If you want to, you can actually add beads to this as well and have some more of those little faceted rondelles. But I'm just spinning the chain or spinning the wire right around the chain, making sure the chain stays straight so that way my coil looks nice. I'm gonna go ahead and coil doing the same exact thing, holding the chain for about, I have there about seven coils. I'll keep doing it for another three. We'll do it in even 10 coils. And I'm really letting the wire go. I don't want it to be so tight that it bundles up the chain, but I do wanna see the coil so I do want the coil to be nice, and that's why I'm holding the chain on either end and making a nice coiled wrap. So you can see the coiled wrap right there. You can keep going, you can stop, it's up to you. I'm actually gonna go back to the beginning here and wrap a little bit of that beginning coiled end. Again, because it's hard to hold on to at first. So I'm gonna make that a little bit nicer and smoother looking. And I'm going to come down to the end here also, just do a couple more coils. Once you have enough coils and you're happy with the look of it, you're just going to go in with your wire cutters, making sure you're not cutting the chain, and cut off that extra wire. I'm going to go back to the start here, get a couple of these coils lining up a little nicer. They do get mixed up with the chain a little bit so you can kind of if you need to take the coils off a little bit you can spin the chain around the wire as you separate it and that will uncoil some of those chain pieces once i have it nice in the way that i want it to i'm just going to cut that extra wire again making sure not to cut my chain and i have that nice little coiled piece it's also fun if you do want to oxidize these pieces. That's a fun little piece to bring that darker look into it. It also would look nice if you oxidize the ones up here as well. That chain that I cut off, I'm just going to take off by uncoiling it around the chain. And then you're going to have your little 
fountain there almost of your gemstones hanging. When you wear it, it's nice and long. It'll look good as a layered piece. It has that nice sophisticate, sophisticance of that high M gemstone, yet it has that fun look of a modern lariat style necklace. It's gonna look great with my earrings, and it's all just using two strands of beads, having tons left over, enough to make more sets, and really have fun wire working and getting back to some simple yet elegant style of wire working jewelry. If you do need any of these materials again, or um, need links to them, you can go back to the beginning of the video, or you can look underneath the video right here. There's a little bit of a uh, description, and then it says a little show more button. If you click on that show more button, it'll click links to all the different products that were used in this design. You can also follow us on Facebook and join our beading group, which is jewelry or beading and jewelry making. If you join beading and jewelry making, you get to interact with us, talk to us, see what we're up to, what we're making. Also interact with tons of beaders and jewelry makers and designers. It's really a great interactive group and a great way to stay in touch. You can also again visit us potomacbeads.com and if you're so lucky to get near one of our stores, please stop in, say hi, and gather some materials there. Thanks a lot for watching everyone and have fun making this flowing briolette necklace. If you are matching your earrings too, have fun doing that and making all different versions of these, learning how to do those briolettes and coiling onto the chain.